Hey, welcome to the podcast Domination Show, where we help you launch, grow, monetize, and dominate the podcasting space. This is a show where we believe that if you can get attention with your podcast, you can influence someone. And if you can influence someone, you can get them to take massive action. And if you can get someone to do that, you, my friend, can dominate. I'm Luis Diaz, your host and founder of Podcast Domination, and I'm your guide. Let's go. What is going on, my friend? Welcome back, or welcome for the first time, to the Podcast Domination Show, where we bring you everything domination-related, and that can cover a lot of things. For instance, today we have Patrick Siles on the show. Patrick is the CEO and founder of Vitalytics, a video hosting platform that packs a friggin' punch. Uh, You will hear in this episode some of the cool things they're able to do with analytics in his platform, and it's really exciting stuff, especially if you are a marketer or someone who sells stuff online (laughs) using video, you are going to be in for a treat on this episode because Patrick really unpacks some very compelling stuff, some interesting things he's doing, him and his team are doing over there at Vitalytics. In addition to this, you're going to learn some very important universal best practices or or skill sets of sorts that um, are universally usable and they are basically a secret sauce to the a formula, I guess you would say, for some of his biggest and best clients. So we unpack some of the secrets that he's seeing that really works with his biggest clients and also some of the cool features at Vitalytics. Now you can, just off if you're just interested in the product itself and want to go check it out more, it'll be in the show notes over at lewisryan.com or you can just go to vitalytics.com and there's plenty of information over there. But without further ado, enjoy my conversation with Patrick Siles. Catch you later. All right. What is going on, my friends? Welcome back to the Podcast Domination Show. Today, we got a, a pretty cool guest who's kind of on the other side of audio. So not audio, not podcasting, but video and using video. Obviously, I know I use video a decent amount, obviously, in Instagram and Facebook, other places. But I forgot there was a crazy statistic the other day. We can talk about this later, too. But it was saying something around in 2020, there's like 78% of all marketing messages are going to be conveyed through video. So I think it's pretty important. And it's the reason why I have my buddy Patrick on here from Vitalytics to talk about some of the talk about video podcasting or video marketing and, and kind of give us some good insights as to kind of where this whole thing is going. So Patrick, my friend, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. How about yourself, Lewis? I'm all right. I'm all right. I, uh, I'm pumped to have you on because uh, you're doing some pretty cool stuff at Vitalytics and definitely want to just get you on here and just kind of share with everyone what's going on. What kind of and get some insight about this about Vitalytics and how it started and, and kind of your background and and go from there really. So I'm interested in a lot of things, but we'll we'll start with that. <laughs> okay. So so how I got into Vitalytics? Yeah. How do you got into Vitalytics? Um what yeah. it is for a lot of people like what is Vitalytics? <laughs> right. But, yeah, let's start there. <laughs> we can answer yeah. both those questions. Cool. So so uh Vitalytics is a uh, video hosting and marketing platform. So what that means is it's really kind of the tool that you would use to host videos on your website. You know, maybe a lot of people don't realize this, but when you hit a web page and there's a video there, it's typically hosted by a third-party service besides the website. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is just because video is a really, really heavy asset to, you know, transfer over the web. And there's some really kind of, you know, technical considerations that you need to take care of there. So in its most basic form, it does that. It hosts videos on your websites, but we go above and beyond really any other you know, kind of video platform out there and all the kind of tools and features that we provide to our users to increase the sales and conversions from their videos. And, you know, a lot of those are around like the autoplay of how we, you know, get the video to start and let people know that it's starting, that it's playing, let the video restart when it's unmuted because a lot of browsers are now blocking videos Mm -hmm. with sound. And then also we have deep uh, analytics into what's happening inside of the video where you can see people dropping off second by second. You can also see where people are purchasing in the video, how far they watched into the video before they decided to go and convert. And, you know, that's really just scratching the surface as far as what the platform does. But that's, uh, you know, some of the tools that, that we offer to people. And the bottom line is that it's all designed to increase the sales and conversions of people's videos. Right. So, yeah, Got so it. it's designed for businesses that are selling with video that need their videos to turn visitors into buyers. 
So that's the, that's the problem that we're going out to uh, solve. And I got into this space. I've been an online marketer for the last eight years, going on nine now, and a, an entrepreneur for 10 years. I had an offline business before this. And I had a, su- a supplement company. It's actually still around and profitable. It's running on autopilot in the background, which is really nice. And I've sold millions of dollars of supplements through that business. And I've worked on other projects, uh, some other businesses of my own that I've started and you know, also done some client work over the years and some uh, consulting uh, myself with people. And basically every single sale that I've ever made online was done with video. Gary V has this quote, that if you're not using video, you're going to lose. Mm-hmm. And I've tried doing sales pages and you know all the other kind of you know tricks in the book. And at the end of the day, I think that video is not only more effective than all the other mediums because it's the closest thing to being in person and really kind of scaling your message in a, in a natural way for people to consume. But it's also very easy to do when done right. Because when you look at web pages, people, if your web page is uh, ugly or if it's not responsive and it looks bad on mobile or anything like that, people will, you know, people will immediately click away from that and they will judge your business harshly for that. But when it comes to video, at least in 2019, you know, when we're recording this, there's still a lot of forgiveness when it comes to, you know, the quality of the video. It doesn't need to be, you know, a mega production or anything like that. So if you're just able to convey your message in an effective way on video, uh, it can actually be very easy to uh, actually produce them. And and then, of course, it's also more effective. I agree. iPhones, I think, have played a big, big part in that. Like you can produce really great, high quality videos right from your phone. So easy access to great, great tools. And then taking that onto a sales page, you know, however you want to do that, I think could be is what I see a lot of people doing, really. Mm-hmm. To backtrack into, I didn't know you had a supplement company, so that's kind of an interesting, cool fact. <laughs> but, <laughs> but with with Vitalytics, kind of, I know you mentioned the the Gary V quote, and yes, he's he's big on video. He's definitely big on audio too. Where do you see kind of like your best customers, like the ones who are really crushing it? Where do you see them? What do you see them kind of doing differently? I'm curious to figure out. Like, are there any stark differences between what your maybe your best performing? clients are doing and maybe some of the ones who aren't performing as well? Yeah, you know, it's really interesting because I think people have this misconception when it comes to video that it needs to be like a high-end production, kind of like I was just just saying. And y- you would be surprised, some of our best performing videos on our platform, and we're doing millions and millions of plays a month, and, and we're powering, you know, eight-figure businesses, seven-figure businesses, uh, really kind of across the gambit. We have some you know, kind of gurus in the space like John Benson, who invented the video sales letter, uses us. And at any rate, you know, we have a broad spectrum of different users, but it's surprising because some of the best performing videos on the platform are actually quite ugly. <laughs> you know, it, they're not, you know, super high end produced necessarily. And really what they're doing differently is that they're just nailing the message. And this is a universal truth. And it doesn't even matter if you're doing video or if you're doing it on YouTube or if you're doing a podcast or a sales page or an email. Yeah. It's really just about speaking to those people's, you know, pain, their deepest desires, you know, grabbing their attention and, you know, off, also offering them something intriguing. And that's typically something new. You know, people, you know, if they, if they hit a page, you know, whatever it is, we have so much information coming at us every single day that we are really in kind of filter mode, you know, 99% of the time where we're just saying like, this is a distraction, you know, how can I shut this off? Right. You know, so it's just like, you know, what is this? What is this about? How is this different? Why should I listen to you? And those are some of the thoughts that are going through people's heads when they, you know, hit any sort of medium, uh, especially a sales message. So the people that are really successful are really kind of grabbing that attention, speaking to their desires, you know, said that they're, you know, kind of perking up and paying attention and they're offering them something new, something intriguing. And that's typically what we call in the biz, a big idea, right? Something that kind of has a spin and uh, also is kind of intuitively understandable, meaning that it kind of gives you that aha moment where you go like, oh, that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, it's not too yeah. not too confusing. If you confuse, you're going to lose. So the like the messaging, yeah, yeah, the messaging has to be really really simple, but like you said, intriguing and 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 novel in a way. It's like, huh, that yeah, that, that yeah. does. Yeah, I'm thinking when you're saying that, I'm thinking like some of the best sales pages with video that I've seen, they're super simple. They have a big idea, you know, make a ton of money, you know, with your with your laptop. You know, some of the some of the more uh <laughs> I guess hated ones now, but yeah. the ones that really convert, they have a huge idea. They nail the messaging. I mean, messaging is a kind of a, a funny thing because like the word messaging, do you mean like the hook? 
there? Do you mean kind of what you're saying like with the offer? Is the offer so good? Is that the messaging? Is there any, I don't know if this, that might be the most simplest term, but is there any other way to dive deeper into what the messaging, yeah. what, what that really means? Yeah. So, I mean, absolutely. And you're right. That is kind of an umbrella term that kind of covers all these different pieces of the video. So, you know, like a, like a very effective video sales letter, you know, it can, you know, have the lead, uh, which is normally where you're grabbing the attention. You know, it's just like, yeah. hey, do you want to lose weight? Like, you know, and then it also dimensionalizes things where it's like, hey, do you want to lose 30 pounds in the next 30 days? You know, and then it goes into kind of that that hook, you know, and the hook would also be tied into the big idea, right? And it could be like, you know, lose 30 pounds in the next 30 days with, you know, while, while you sleep or something like that. And uh, really what it needs to come down to, I'm not in the, I'm not in the weight loss space. So maybe that's a bad example. For <laughs> right. to come up no worries. With. We get the comment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, um, but it needs to offer them something new. So the example that you had was make a bunch of money from your laptop. That's, that's, you know, maybe what people want, but that type of message is just kind of, uh, you know, everywhere. So it's, so it's quite generic. Right. So it could be like, you know, make passive income, make passive income on Amazon, make passive income without using the telephone, you know, make passive income with affiliate marketing, working four hours a week, you know, and that's really where we're getting into something that's a lot more kind of, uh, compelling because it has that it's t speaking to their, you know, to their desires of making money. It's passively. So it's answering, you know, the objective, you know, or objection if they don't want to work, you know, right. 60 hours a week and grind out a business. And uh, it's also, you know, affiliate marketing, at least if they know what that is, then they know that it means they don't need to have their own product. They don't need inventory. Exactly. They don't need customer support. Yeah. And, you know, something, you know, would be even better with, you know, say make, you know, $10,000 a month, you know, passively working only four hours a week, you know, with affiliate marketing and by partnering with Amazon, you know, and it's like, hmm. And then that Amazon piece, it's like, well, how can I partner with Amazon, you know, and it's a bit more kind of intriguing and getting that kind of curiosity. So that would kind of be the big idea or the big promise all kind of packaged into one. Got it. Um, yeah. That makes it much more clear. Yeah, that, that does. Cause there's so many different elements to, I think to a winning, obviously a winning offer, but the mm -hmm. messaging, I've heard that before from other places too. It's like the messaging has to, has to hit. That's like the number one piece. So I'm glad you brought that up. Now with your, I guess, are there any, is there anything else? How else would someone, could someone use Vitalytics besides their own website? Is there any other ways? I'm curious because, because I can see this use being used a lot in a lot of other areas, my own mm -hmm. business. So um, how else, yeah, is so everyone else using it or any insights there? Yeah. So, so it's only for hosting of uh, videos. Um, so you can share links, you know, from the Vitalytics Bit platform, if you just want to shoot the video to somebody really fast, so you don't need to actually embed it on your own website. And this is actually something where, uh, we, we have a user that we're onboarding right now that's in the crochet niche. And he has, you know, hundreds of videos that are all about like how to, you know, kind of do different techniques and, and things like that. So. But he's not, he, he's not really, you know, worried about having a membership site where like this stuff is locked down and he doesn't want to embed them on a bunch of web pages and do that extra work of kind of mm. setting all that up and managing it. So he's just going to use those links where it's just like, Hey, here's your daily video. Here's some tips, you know, and stuff like that. Beyond that, that's really, you know, all that it does. And, you know, that actually is a huge kind of market that we're going after. Uh, so, you know, we're happy to play in that space, but what some other people are doing with video is obviously, you know, they use them in their ads, they use them on social media, they use them on YouTube. I know that, you know, obviously, you know, with the podcast domination show that a lot of people are interested in podcasting, which is a great medium to cultivate an audience and to really kind of generate a following and to generate traffic. So I like to think of things as far as, you know, kind of conversion strategies or traffic strategies. And on the conversion side, it's going to be copywriting, it's going to be videos, it's going to be sales pages, emails, things like that. And then on the traffic side, it's going to be things like, you know, buying paid ads, you know, having a Facebook group or podcasting. So, you know, really what works well is when you have a consistent message throughout your entire funnel, right? From the very first touch to the last touch. And what goes even further than that is having a consistent message that's saying the same thing over and over again, and uh, also doing it in a similar medium. Because if somebody watches your video on, say, Facebook, then you know that they're inclined to watch a video. Sometimes, you know, maybe we're in a crowded place where we don't want to turn on sound on our phone or, or something like that. So, you know, we're not going to watch video, but if somebody already engaged with a video, it shows that they're inclined to do that. That's a medium that they enjoy. Uh, it's like some people like to read books and some people prefer audio books. So then kind of just having that go through, you know, the entire funnel from the first touch to the, to the sale, 
can be very effective as far as how you harness that power of video. And then also just having your message being very consistent through those. And what I actually tell some people to do is if they have a, say a sales video on their webpage, that's maybe 30 minutes long, right? Which is not unheard of. We actually have users with, I think, uh, maybe, you know, two hours, three hours long on our platform. And that might be like a webinar replay. And it's a very different thing, a high ticket item and stuff. But at any rate, if it's a longer video that's on your webpage, you can actually chop off the very beginning of that and then put that on social media and even yeah. just have a link to say like, yeah. hey, watch the rest over here. And then that gives them the pitch. I have a very good friend who's uh, a big time YouTuber. I, I won't say his name, but you know, uh, so, but I will speak about some of uh, the specifics about his business and he's generating, you know, high five figures to six figures per month with organic traffic on YouTube. What he does is he'll give, say, uh, you know, three to four tips on a certain topic. And then at the very end of the video, he'll say, Hey, for tip number five, you know, for, for bonus tip, you know, it's like, you can do all these things yourself on your own, or you can actually shortcut the process and actually just take a dietary supplement that does all these things. You can read more about it over on my website. So yeah. it's kind of using that video as a kind of a lead gen, you know, in a traffic strategy and then bring it. That is interesting. Okay. Into, wow. Into um, the sales there's, it's, it's so crazy. Cause yeah, <laughs> I know a few guys like that who done really well on places like YouTube and it's amazing what you can do with organic traffic over there still. Mm -hmm. with video because people just tend to almost like podcasting like people will find a great channel yeah. and they'll binge watch it like the other day i was driving back from uh, tampa and i got on to my one of my buddies recommended sam ovens and i knew who he was before but i really didn't know his stuff so at the end of the day I, a three-hour drive i spent like mm -hmm. I, I watched like five episodes of his stuff and it led it led me down to uh, watch his webinar and was interested in that mm -hmm. but Never bought anything, but it's funny how, yeah, so you know, totally the consumption patterns the of video. people and when they, they'll find something really good and then that will lead to a, a video like that. And then I'll take them to the website and it'll typically convert the the viewer into a sale. I find that fascinating <laughs> just to study how, like how people consume. So you mentioned before that the analytics allow you to uh, see exactly mm -hmm. when someone is buying, when someone is, has dropped off. Um, what are some of the things is there like a sweet spot mm -hmm. for like typically when you see someone like wh what percentage of a video that someone has to consume until they buy? Have you, did you see any commonalities there with like the percentage of, of the video watched? You know, some of our bigger clients, I've, you know, I, I see their analytics and, you know, they might have massive, massive drop off, but the people that stick, you know, are so engaged in, in such a high percentage of them wind up buying that they're able to really kind of survive mm -hmm. that massive drop off. However, you know, I do get this question a lot. So, you know, there's no hard and fast rule for, you know, say like video completions or anything like that. But the most important metric that I like to look at is how many of how much of your audience is still engaged after your lead. So meaning, um, and your lead is the first, maybe, I mean, on a very short video, it could be maybe, you know, 10 seconds, 30 seconds or so. And then on a longer video, it could be as mm -hmm. much as five minutes. And the lead is really just kind of, it's like your opening statements, right? Like you're a lawyer going to court, defending, you know, your uh, client and you're making your case, you're stating, you know, kind of a, the big ideas, you're answering major objections, you're giving them a reason to really engage with it, creating some urgency, some curiosity, those types of things, right? And the lead is going to kind of cover a lot of the different points that you're going to go into later in the video, right? So it's going to be talking about, you know, the, the problem that you're solving, even the way that you're going to be solving it, you know, possibly it's going to kind of hint at the mechanism or, you know, really kind of what's going to deliver this result for them. And, uh, you know, and then again, answer, you know, or overcome any major objections. So if somebody sticks through that, then it means that they're quite engaged. And then really, you just have to make sure that your story is congruent. And then the biggest and hardest part after that would just be doing the emotional transference over to the product. So a lot of people will be like, hey, you know, I used to be a struggling you know, entrepreneur. I was trying to build an Amazon store and, I, and it never, never worked. And then I, uh, I got mentored by somebody and they taught me all these tricks. And then I turned that into a software that you can use today. Now, that 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 kind of umbilical cord going from, you know, that story of how the individual got mentored over, over to yeah. the, uh, Hey, and now I turn this into a software that's push button easy for you. That's the emotional transference. And that just has to be smooth. So in some of our dietary supplement, uh, you know, offers, 
you know, we've talked about how, you know, the, my co-founder, Elizabeth Thompson, you know, worked with a doctor and got this information and she learned this stuff about how anxiety really kind of works like inside of the brain. And then she packaged that into a dietary supplement. That's a lot harder kind of a, you know, obstacle to come over to say like, Hey, I was working with this, this doctor. I got these results and now I turned it into a supplement, you know? So that's the emotional mm -hmm. transference. And then you just have to make sure that your offer is rock solid, you know, that it's, that it seems like it's money at a discount. Uh, you know, I know that we've both heard this before. It's a very kind of, yeah, very compelling statement. And it's just like, you know, is this money at a discount? You know, is this an incredible deal? Everybody wants a deal. I'm a sucker for a deal. If it's like, hey, normally it's 2000 today, it's a thousand, you know? Uh, and also my wife, right. hey, I'm going to go spend a thousand Damn. bucks. So she'll be like, really? Why? And I'm like, it's a discount. <laughs> but anyways, I kind of right. got off topic there. So anyways, that's kind of the flow of the videos, right? But going back, so the metric, one of the most important ones to watch is how many people are engaging with your lead, uh, the lead of the video. And I would say that you need a minimum of 30% of your audience still engaged at the end of your lead. And in, in Vitalytics, at least, you know, we have these, uh, these graphs and charts and stuff where you can see where people are dropping off. So it's very obvious when you have a winner and a loser because they, uh, a loser will look like, you know, somebody jumped off a cliff. You know, it's very obvious. Mm, yeah. Okay. And then also, you know, if you're looking at your offer, you know, like when you actually reveal the product and you make the final price, right? If you're doing like price drops and, and things like that, if somebody sticks to that point, that's a very good thing. But if a lot of people are not making it to that point in the video, like say less than 5%, then it's going to be kind of hard mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, achieve a conversion rate that's going to be profitable for you. Uh, you know, got it. Got it. I'm on, I'm on the website yeah. now and I wanted to ask if you had Excellent. any, uh, <laughs> any stories in terms of case studies or stories or th things like that, that would, you, you could share. Yeah, sure. So, cause it's really interesting. It's, it's really interesting. Like the platform and like what you can use it for. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a huge asset. If, uh, yeah. if you're running a lot of traffic or running a lot of, you know, offer tra people to an offer, that's a video, whether it be a webinar or, sure. or not. And I would say it doesn't even matter if you're running a lot of traffic. It matters if you need that traffic to convert, right? If you need mm -hmm. those insights into what's happening inside of the video, and if you need our additional features that, that we call video conversion technology that are going to do like an extra push to make them more effective. Uh, things like having call to action buttons inside of the videos or, you know, having autoplay with a message on top of it. Or when you pause the video, throwing up a thumbnail that they haven't seen before, that's a message to, you know, encourage them to continue watching. We call that an exit thumbnail. Mm -hmm. So that's on the video conversion side. And then, and then the analytics side, those are kind of the two pillars of our main features there. So, you know, we do, we have a, a case study on the website. We need to publish some more. They're actually, you know, sitting in my inbox to review uh, <laughs> for months, you know, um, but, right. uh, one that we haven't published yet. That is super duper interesting. And I like to talk about it whenever I get the chance is a few months ago at my supplement company, we started testing uh, different forms of videos. So. Now online with uh, some of the most like effective video offers out there, people that are spending seven figures plus per month just on traffic, right? Driving into their offers. What a lot of these people are doing is for the first, you know, for, for the first like two minutes plus, basically the lead or more is, uh, you know, high quality video. So they're using, you know, high quality stock video. They're, they're mm -hmm. using uh, on camera, you know, either actors or, you know, the face of the product. They're using like a B roll from maybe their events and things like that, right? So it seems like a very kind of a high end production, right? For, for the first few minutes. And then they're switching over to the typical ugly, you know, uh, video sales letter kind of uh, format, which is text mm -hmm. on screen. Gotcha. And what that does is it boosts the engagement, at least the idea is that it boosts the engagement on the very uh, first part of the video. And then, you know, kind of gets them to consume your message. It's not all that much different than, you know, back in the day when infomercials just first came out, people didn't realize what they were. And they were literally, you know, the kind of one of the first types of native ads, meaning that it was kind of disguised uh, natively in, in uh, you know, content that the consumer was, you know, already kind of, you know, going mm -hmm. through. And when it's like that, you know, they're like, oh, wow, what is this? This is a show, you know, or, or you know, what's going on here? And then they start listening. They're like, hey, I do have that problem. Yeah, I would like to solve this. No, I haven't tried this thing, you know, or, or whatever. So, so it's kind of a, it's kind of a sneaky way to get them to consume your message. Right. But anyways, yep. going back to the case study is, so what we did was we hired a, a voice actress that does all of our videos for this particular offer at the uh, supplement company. And she appeared on camera in front of a green screen. And then we uh, 
embedded the uh, basically what she was saying into the video, like subtitles. So you had one video that was literally black words on white background, ugly as could be, and then compared <laughs> to uh, a woman that was on screen. Now, here's the kicker. Which one do you think won? You know, <laughs> I would be more inclined to say the woman, the female one with the actual human being, but I'm sure it was different. Yeah, like the fact <laughs> I'm asking you, yeah. you're like, I feel like I'm going to, this right? is a trick question. Well, yeah. <laughs> she totally lost. And um, that's crazy. Yeah. And here's the thing. It was the same exact message. And she was the same voice actress that did both. So for whatever, <laughs> like, and I, I don't really have a good reason to explain this. Right. And there's, there's things where maybe it was the congruence of the page that they saw before and all these other things. But, you know, we went back and did another test and tried to control for those things. And, you know, it just, it just didn't back out. And really, <laughs> you know, what is the takeaway from that, you know, is that you need to test, right. And, you know, that you can't ever rely on other people's results or what they're doing. I remember years ago, when I was getting my, uh, my uh, online business off the ground, I was uh, speaking to a buddy and he was saying like, oh, well, like, you know, let's look at what Apple's doing, you know, with their marketing. And it's like, <laughs> why would you do that? They're a trillion dollar no. company that is selling a totally different products in a totally different medium. And, you know, you don't want to copy people that are big today. You want to, you know, in, in what they're doing now, you want to copy what they did when they were small. And the other piece of that too is, you know, it's tempting to think that you need to go super high in on the production or anything like this. And this is what I mean when it really just comes down to the messaging. So yeah, I, I actually have a course. I'm not looking to, to push it on here, but it, it's Vidmaster Academy. I'm just uh, wrapping up the first inaugural class of it. And then we're going to open it up to, to new members. Oh, nice. Yeah. And it's, it's all about creating videos that convert and, and stuff like that. But at any rate, what I, you know, what I tell people in there to do is, you know, go, go with the simplest path to execution, right? Don't put obstacles yeah. between you and success uh, and just try to test the message. Because in my experience, even if you do all these high-end, you know, kind of a, you know, production tips or anything else, and this holds true, whether you're doing, you know, live videos on Facebook or you're doing uh, sales pages or anything else, just go with the simplest form, get the message out there and see if it works. Because yeah, do, yeah, just doing all these extra tricks is maybe going to boost your conversion rate by 20% in my experience. And, you know, maybe there's like some exceptions to that rule, but really at the end of the day, if somebody doesn't like your message, it doesn't matter how pretty your video is, how pretty your website is or anything else like that, right? It's like going on a date and, you know, even if, you know, the, the, the other person is, you know, completely beautiful and you're totally into them, but you just know that their values are totally different, you know, uh, and they want different things out of their life. And it's it just the lifestyle. It's, is totally yeah, incongruent. It, you're going to pass hopefully. Right. At least if you're smart. Right. So, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that, that's hundred percent. That makes sense on the podcasting side of things. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of shows have crazy, amazing production, but if your content sucks, I mean, there's a guy I listen to right now, Frank Kern. He freaking does it from his, from his, it's all Facebook lives. It's all repurposed Facebook live videos, yeah. but they get the message across. He's a great marketer. So the, uh, the content's good. So no one cares if it's a Facebook live, so it converts. Yeah. So yeah, it's the same thing. And, you know, that kind of reminds me of something else that's true of podcasting and it's true of video as well. Is that get to the point, you know, so, many, so <laughs> yeah. many, like I listen to podcasts sometimes or I see videos and they have like a 30 second intro with like, you know, all this stuff, you know, that it, it, it's like when you're watching a TV show and it yeah. has this super long intro. And if you're binging it, it's like, dude, I just saw this 12 times today. Right. And there's, <laughs> there's a reason why Netflix has that button skip intro because those things are super annoying. So, you know, when I'm starting a video and I, I would say this, this should be true of podcasting as well. I'd like your opinion. But, you know, just grab their attention, speak to their pain, you know, because people, oh yeah, what is it? They only care about the radio station, what's in it for me, uh, mm -hmm. W-I. W-I-F-F-M yeah, or exactly. W-I-I-F, what's in it? Yeah, with well, W-I-I-F-M. <laughs> W-I-I-F-M. Okay, yeah. I couldn't yeah. quite remember, <laughs> so I was trying to figure it out on the fly. Yeah, d people tune in to only that radio station, what's in it for right. me. And a lot of people make the mistake of talking about themselves or how great they are or something like that. And it's there's a kind of a time and place to do that as far as reinforcing the social value or the credibility, the track record. Right. Of That's of where yourself. it gets hairy. But uh, none of that matters unless, you know, unless somebody is interested in what you have to say and how it can help them. So, yeah. And 
Yeah, typically they only really care about that part after you've helped them. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like, okay, now I care about you. Now I kind of want to interested, more interested about like your life or what you do or like with Gary V, like no one gave a crap what Gary V was well, about him really in, in the early days mm -hmm. until he started to help them and get create value. And now like, oh, like now it's all about his life and all this other stuff. Right. But I feel like I found that you only get to that point after you've really um, created value for someone. Mm -hmm. The podcasting side of things answer the question. Mm -hmm. It's I typically tell people like 60 seconds, get in, get out. Like you've got to tell them why they should stay a little bit about who you are and what's coming up in 60 seconds and then roll it, like get into the content. Nice. So are you a fan of the intros where it's like, welcome to the podcast show. Two million downloads. Do you like that? It's, yeah, uh, it's it's funny because like in those intros are good because if you're a new listener, say if you're like episode 74 and you just started listening now, they've got to know kind of a little bit of context, but it can't be it can't do it like overdo it. Right. Yeah. So what we do is we split, take a sound bite mm -hmm. typically like a really good sound bite mm. and put it at the beginning. Nice. Hook the audience. And then you've got them hooked for 15 seconds because they want to know what's what's going on there. And then we roll the intro. Yeah. So that's so that it kind of makes them want to sit through it a bit more. Definitely. So I, uh, that's what we found works. Yeah, I've uh, I, I listen to quite a few podcasts. I'm huge on audio consumption of material. I'm, I'm way too ADD Same. to sit down and read a book. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm just I'm constantly doing podcasts or audio books. Yeah, I always have uh, uh, earbuds in my in my uh, in my ears. But at any rate, what's what some of the ones do that I listen to? They'll they'll be like, Hey, I got an episode coming up for you. It's great. I, you know, I got Lewis on the show. He's going to talk about how he's dominating with podcasts, how he's able to get people, you know, millions of downloads, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like kind of a preview and then does the mm -hmm. intro and then it goes straight into the interview. Yep. That'll work too. That's, that's awesome. Any kind of intro, like here's what's coming up. Here's why you should stay. And then we can roll the intro that yeah. anything like that to that effect is perfect. I've got one client right now. What we do is we, we produce the show notes for him first. Mm -hmm. And then we'll give him the timestamp so he knows exactly like the hooks he should say. Yeah. And then he'll say those before they get into the intro. Perfect. Yeah. So there's a lot of different testing, a lot of different ways. I wish we had some of the analytics that we have, like like you guys have on Vitalytics for audio. iTunes is now coming out with some where you can see the consumption rate. You can kind of see where they drop off. But it's still in in, in its early stages, right? So yeah. I think there could be a lot more done. So I'm interested to see what's coming up. But um, Definitely. But, but yeah, Patrick, thank you so much. Uh, I want to I want to make sure everyone knows. So vitalytics.com. How do people spell vitalytics? Because yeah, right? I'm sure there might be some questions. <laughs> I misspell it like a couple times a week because I'm just <laughs> typing too fast. And I'm like, wait, is it the T or Y first? So, so, it's, so it stands for video analytics. So it's V-I-D-A-L-Y-T-I-C-S. Yeah. And It'll be in the show notes too. So beautiful. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks so much for having me on the show. I actually really enjoyed talking about marketing and kind of the differences between audio and video and how people can really kind of get these things to work for them in their business. This is a ton of fun. Thanks so much. Yeah, you're welcome, Patrick. And last thing before oh, we go. Bonus um, round. You're, what's that? I said bonus round. Bonus round. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got two. Now I got two questions for you. Number one, <laughs> um, what is, what's the name of the course you're talking about? Because I'm sure People are going to want to check that out. I want to have that in the show notes as well. By the time this is produced, it'll probably be it'll probably be done. I don't know how many weeks you have left in the in the initial course. Yeah, but um, yeah, no, it's probably gonna. It, yeah, it should definitely be done because actually all the content's done, and now I'm just kind of reorganizing it and kind of putting some final touches on it because the first round was all live, right? So, okay. Yeah. So you know, in like one week, I was super duper sick, so I'm going back and and kind of doing that and stuff. Uh, so we're actually, and we're actually going to add a lot more content and kind of make it a little bit more like kind of a, a paint by numbers and, and templated uh, for people that don't cool. really want to learn marketing, but they want to get a really effective video. So that's called Vidmaster Academy. You can access, you can go and check it out at videoconversionsecrets.com. Videoconversionsecrets.com. Okay. Yeah. We'll have that in the show notes as well. And then last thing, what are your top three podcasts? I was interested, you, you're, Ooh. you like to listen to audio, like, just like me, like I consume a lot of content audio. Um, through audio. So what are your top three podcasts for people looking to grow their, and just business, I guess would be your, be my, my yeah. suggestion. So, so I'm pulling up uh, overcast right now. So, <laughs> so I can say, what am I listening to? So I really, really like sold with webinars. That's probably my favorite. And I, mm. uh, it's with Joel Irway. Sold with webinars. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, uh, the Vidmaster Academy. So for the last six months, I've been just immersed in webinars, which is kind of a, a different take on videos, just a little bit longer form. And, you know, there's always more that you can learn. So I've been really kind of consuming a lot of that content. Hmm. I met Joel at a uh, mastermind 
uh, the host of the show and also who runs the uh, webinar agency. Uh, well, yeah, the webinar agency. So, uh, you know, and I'm just really impressed with him as a copywriter. So I listen to him a lot. And then I listen to the podcast domination show. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I have to. Hey, hey. Yeah. But actually, right. um, two of the ones that I started listening to after the perfect life retreat where, where we actually met was Craig Valentine's early to rise. And then Ben yes. Rose also has one. So I've uh, been on a huge personal development kick. It's, you know, it's middle of January in 2019 right now when we're recording this. So, you know, I'm really kind of laying some foundation of some new habits and going deeper on, you know, uh, some, some goal setting and stuff like that. So right. I really just kind of fill my head with a bunch of marketing material and a bunch of personal development stuff. Same here. Same here. People ask me like, just like, what do you listen to? What do you do outside of work? I'm like, I learned about marketing and sales <laughs> yeah. and personal development. I'm like, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, single track minded with this stuff. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> but, you know, uh, no, hey. like, I, I view it as like my life's calling, right? Like I'm, I'm right. really passionate about this stuff. I enjoy it immensely. It really reminds me of when I was uh, a teenager and a kid and I would play video games for just hours and hours and hours. And it was like, oh, I really just want to play this game and running a business is really just, you know, it's a bunch of different challenges and, you know, mm -hmm. personally, you know, professionally in all different areas. And, you know, I just really kind of enjoy that. And I view it as almost like being an artist, you know, and pumping out, you know, new pieces of work and just trying to go to the next level. You know, I, I don't know about you, but, you know, my goal is to be the best version of myself and to be self-actualized. And, you know, that's, that's the pursuit. And this is the medium, you know, in the area of where I'm focusing that effort, you know, to, to try to really kind of sharpen, you know, who I am as a person. I, I, I would agree on that. I am uh, <laughs> on the same kick in terms of trying to be the best I can be in, in the podcasting lane uh, and especially uh, the best version of myself. I do a lot of visualization, visualization stuff, Ooh, nice. um, which is, which has helped <laughs> even in the gym, like when I'm training, but um, that'll be for another podcast. But uh, Patrick, right. I really, really appreciate you coming on, man, and talk about Vitalytics and all the crazy awesome stuff you guys are doing over there. So we will, uh, See you later. Thank you everyone for tuning in and I'll catch you guys later. Hey, what's up? It's Lewis again. Really hope you took something of value away from today's show. And don't forget, there's only one thing I want you to do. If you need help, if you want to chat about this, if there's any way I can serve you, that is to text or maybe even give me a call at 561-405-7838. That is a Google voice number that goes directly to my phone. So I will be on demand for you and we can chat about how we can help you grow, launch, or monetize your podcast. Thanks. I'll catch you next week.